Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here, and today I have something special for you. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, this painting is a work in progress for which I wanted to devote more time and, and do in private and not film. So it's a little larger, as you can tell, and I put a little more work and time and focus in it. But I was inspired today to share with you the next stage of putting in the large shapes of shadows, which is a, a wash that a lot of people find very challenging. So I felt inspired to share that stage with you. Uh, and I want to do this. I want to put this is uh, based on a picture I took in Georgia, the country, not the state. Um, and I want to do the shadows in a beautiful, vibrant, kind of colorful way that has a lot of character to it, but still show its shadows. They're going to be a little muted too, obviously. And I think you're really going to enjoy this one. I'm going to narrate it real time. So just something a little more detailed and in-depth and for a larger piece that I put a little more time and effort and focus into. So let's get started. Okay, so as mentioned, I'm going to try and do this real time, which it's been a while since I did uh, a video like that. Uh, properly real time so it's gonna make the process a little slower but we are looking at a more narrow stage uh, of the painting process and I may get a phone call in which I may have to take a pause hopefully it won't happen in a too critical of a stage of a wash so uh, one can hope uh, but we'll see. Uh, so here I am starting to mix the colors again th these are parts where I'll sometimes skip uh, when I'm paint when I'm filming and then narrating after the fact, but I do want to show you uh, most of it now. I may cut out some parts of this, of course. So colors, and I said I will mention in the next process I'm showing. So I have French ultramarine here, this one, this well, and then I have some perlin red here, and then I have a uh, new gamboge, and also yellow ochre. Okay, so I'm gonna use these for the yellow ochre, it's very soft and it'll, it'll always be a little dominant at first, so just something to uh, note. Now let me switch to a bit of a smaller brush here. Got my water bucket outside the screen. And I'm gonna start here. So you see I marked the shapes of light and shadow. We have shadows here, 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 all the way. Even this wall is gonna be darker, this wall and then it will connect to this kind of a top section uh, that's a little warmer for the shingles uh, and it's gonna be real fun. So I'm gonna get started here with the top, keeping it a little warm, I think, uh, because of the, the shingles there again. Um, and then I'll, I'll slowly kind of warm it up, okay? Uh, so let's, let's just go for it and see. Now I may zoom in kind of um, manually uh, once I edit the video, if I see that not enough details are showing, so uh, you can expect that. Uh, I don't want to make sure that you'll see everything. And I am trying, I, I do, I always consider incorporating something a little more uh, professional in terms of the angles and so on, but then I always end up just kind of putting more importance on the tutorial and less on that, so you'll have to forgive me for that. Now the side that is facing the light, I'm gonna add a bit more yellow to it, but still keeping it light. Now my main guideline here is actually keeping things light, uh, because you have to understand that if you want to get these washes done uh, without too much stress and and um, and worrying about getting an even wash and getting a good flow. Uh, and I'm gonna do wet and wet for the red shingles here. Uh, what you have to understand is you you have to mix enough uh, water. It's really important, there are enough water and, and paint. Uh, and you can't go at it with a very, uh, let's say, uh, thick wash because that'll dry up on you and it's gonna be, it's gonna cause you trouble, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead with a bit warm here, like this, and then I'm gonna switch over to something a little more neutral, and I'm gonna try and <laughs> work fast, but whenever I narrate, uh, I, I wanna slow down so that I'm actually able to narrate stuff, but uh, you know, it's, it's tough finding that, that balance. Plus, I'm, uh, it's been a while since I did it properly narrated, so again, forgive me, but focus on the actual painting. Uh, process. So now I do want to get this kind of a detail in right now. You see kind of like this. Okay, there is kind of a architectural detail. Now I'm going to switch to a larger brush because what we'll do is essentially cover up this entire front wall. Okay, and you see it started to dry here, but that's fine. I'm going to add a bit blue, a bit yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is great for these things, for warm kind of walls, for European structures, if you will, um, because it's really, it's muted right out the gate without you having to do anything, okay? that's That makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, so you won't get these cliche kind of 
two bright yellow structures, you know, that often will occur. Now, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna skip, uh, not, not, not leave any highlights at this stage, just because it's, it's not worth my trouble, I think. Uh, I can come back with some opaque paint later on. Initially, I thought I'd leave a few highlights, but uh, I think we'll give up on that. Okay, here I messed it up. Let me get a piece of tissue here. That's really bad. So say bye-bye to this, and we'll switch to a bit of a smaller brush here. Hopefully it's gonna be the same wetness. Again, I'm a little not used to working at larger sizes like that uh, while narrating, so you'll forgive me. Hopefully the explanations are still coherent. Now I'm gonna cool it up a bit. Let's move this. Uh, a bit near the bottom, that's way too much. <laughs> Wasn't intending for that, but in any case, that's fine. Now, I need to figure out where to stop this shape, and I think this is a good spot on this arch kind of a thing. And then we'll do, this is okay, a bit of a waviness there, that's fine, I'm not too worried about that. Looking at the camera, making sure I have enough space. Hopefully you will enjoy this kind of a thing, like real-time uh, narrations. And there will be another wash probably after that for the darker shadows, but let me get that kind of a doorway in here. I'm going to start from the center because I want to see how much the paint moves and I want to make sure it doesn't move too much, okay? And I'm, it looks like I'm using very strong paint, but actually um, this is great. This isn't too strong. It'll, it'll hold nicely, I think. Now there's this little arch up top. Let's add that incorporating a little more of the other primary colors. It's probably starting to dry by now, so I'll use very thick paint to make sure that it doesn't cr cause a big mess like this. And all of these kind of more gentle cast shadows will get later on, okay, I promise. Now, I'm gonna move closer to the painting, so sorry if the audio goes a little weaker, because it's, it's coming from my uh, camera in this case. And I'm gonna start working on this roof that's fairly, dark the shingles but still you can tell they're red and I want that to show okay so kind of painting them trying to keep the organic feel here Let me move this trying to keep the organic feel here um, because the shingles are uneven some stick out a little more than others you want to make sure you get that look painting around that shape that I will get later on okay and then I was hoping to connect it to this one, but now that I look at it, it's not necessary, really. I actually want to leave a white gap. Maybe I'll have to add that later on, but in any case, like this. Okay, we'll, we'll add some other stuff later to the texture of the wall. I'm not sure if I'll film it or just show you the final result. We'll, we'll see by <laughs> my mood, basically, what I feel like doing, okay? So this pretty much finishes up that initial part, the main large shadow right around here. Let me soak back some of this paint and now we'll continue to the archway okay stand back up and let's see so we're actually starting with a fairly dark section i'm gonna need some strong paint for that and let me show you right around here there's this pretty strong shadow okay so i'm gonna go at it like that leaving a small gap a very small gap and closing it off in some spots, okay? That goes all the way down to here. Now, this is where I can keep things a little cool. Look at this line here for the bricks, okay? It's important to, to describe them, it's bricks. Um, I'm gonna go a little cooler around this area, we'll see how it goes. But remember, now it goes lighter. So I'm gonna come back with some lighter paint and fill in this area. And I have to say, it's a challenge narrating while uh, painting. It's just been a while since I did it, so. Uh, I'm now remembering how challenging it can be, uh, but it, it does feel a little more true to the, the source, uh, if you will, I'm not sure how to describe it, it just feels a little more accurate in a way, because I'm really showing you what I'm doing and explaining my thought process as I'm thinking it. So here it's going to be kind of yellow, but still kind of muted, so let me grab a bit of everything here, kind of uh, mute this down, leave a highlight here, you see, this kind of a bump. Uh, in the brick, and then we'll kind of cover everything up here. Like that, should have used a bigger brush for that, but it's gonna be fine. Don't have time to now start filling in the other brush with paint, it's gonna be okay. And you'll notice there's a doorway there. Let's get a bunch of very thick paint. I'll even add a bit of black there, just to make it darker more easily. 
and I'm gonna put it here, see? And because the paint is so thick, it's not gonna move too much. And that's actually an opportunity to add a bit of that same kind of a value shadow here onto the inside of that wall, kind of like that. You see there's a bit of a darker section and some architectural details if you wanna do that wet and wet. The secret is while it's still wet and using very thick paint. Again, you have to counter all the wetness on the paper. So I'm actually gonna do some of this statue as well, just to show there's something there. Now, if, it, if it's too much or it's too strong, you just take a sprayer and you just go like that. And it will kind of um, mute it down and, and kind of blend it together, okay? So if that's a problem, you know. Uh, do that and I'll spread it out a little more and merge it together. Now I'm switching to a bit of a warmer mix because these bricks here aren't white actually. So let me get those. You see right here, there is a kind of a, here it's dark, but then see there's a highlight on the right side here. But this isn't as light as for example this wall. Okay, so let me get that in here like this. How are we doing for time? Okay, I have 15 more minutes in the camera. We'll see how it goes. Again, all those real-time stuff I don't have to worry about when I'm just uh, filming after the fact. The arch, I'm gonna close this gap, really important. It shouldn't be there, like this. Maybe even darken some areas here. And you see now it's not gonna flow as much, so I'll just do this and help it move, okay? What I just said earlier. Um, and I think I think we're good on that section. Honestly, it looks okay to me. Maybe, thinking about this, so this shouldn't be as light as well. And it is important to show the bricks, so again, let's do kind of a wet and wet with a very uh, dry paint here, just to show some of the bricks' textures. Uh, and that's by just putting in those small lines, kind of like this, see? And here it should be darker. So kind of like that. Even here in the shadows, you do see some of the bricks texture and it is important. There's another one here, darker. Let's get it a little stronger. And I think we are good. So it's not a perfect arch. The shape isn't like perfectly perfect, but that's fine. Now let's get rid of this right section here. And why I say get rid of is because we're gonna keep it very simple. Let me show you. So I don't wanna go too strong on the red. Uh, just because it's kind of to the side. So let's do something like this, I don't know, violet -y kind of thing, similar to this, for the top, like that. I can put a bit of pure red near the center of the painting, but definitely not here. Then I'm gonna switch to a bit of a yellow, but muted, okay? Kind of like this, really enjoying this process, and connect it very simply. Again, this is a shape that's to the side of the painting. And then switch over to a bit of a cooler blue. Kind of like that. You see how light I keep things? Because again, this improves the flow. Uh, it makes it easier to get even washes. You always want to mix enough and have it wet enough. Sorry, that's my phone. And have it wet enough and I have to keep it on so that I can hear if someone's calling. I'm waiting, expecting a phone call. And here we have that arch. I'm gonna get it in, but I'm gonna define it more by the temperature and less by actual values, okay? Now, I can use this opportunity to put in some of the details of the wall and merge them with this wash while it's still wet. So let me show you. Now, I have to be a little careful here. So let me, I'm gonna come from the side like that, just to make sure I get the lines in the right spots. Uh, let's see here, oh, that's okay. This is dry already, of course, but I can at least do it properly here and have them merge together at the very least. And here I have a couple of bricks uh, that, that are, you know, broken or cut off. And so there's a bit of a dent there. Um, a few other bricks showing here and here. Not too many details because I don't want to take away from the other areas of the painting. But here we go. One here, one there, another one here. I think this is a fun opportunity to see me work on a painting for which I'd put more, a little more time and, and effort into. It's just psychology, you know, because I work on it at my own free time, it's different. Um, but now you get to get a sneak peek into that, trying to really balance the, the creation process and make sure I have enough alone time. 
which is a challenge to be honest with you. So let me get this um, wall or shadows to the left here. And it's just gonna be a muted kind of a mix, something like this, a bit more of that warmth. And here I don't have too much of a desire or need to show too much. The, the thing I do wanna preserve is that highlight between the shingles and this, I don't know, piece of wall that's kind of tilted so you see a shadow under it. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing I'm after here, so I kept that highlight. And then I can connect it to something slightly warmer. It goes all the way down to here. And let me show you, so I'm gonna use a smaller brush for this. Maybe I can use the soap back from the other brush. But in any case, here we go, like that, something like this. And then water it up and keep it moving so that it's lighter because the wall has this curvy shape, so you get this, you see, um, curved change from light to dark. Sorry if the audio is a little weird for this one. Again, I'm, the, the audio is coming from the camera, not from my mic, because I'm recording the narration real time, and so when I'm close to the camera, it can be a little louder. When I'm farther, it can be a little uh, quieter. So here we go, a few of these small dents and, and details in the wall. And don't forget to show, there's an arch here. It doesn't really play a role. I think I'll leave it blank for now. Uh, but don't forget to show those uh, bricks. I'm gonna switch to, again, this smaller brush, my brick brush, and kind of do this. You don't have to really spell it out for the viewer, just enough so that they know that it's there, okay? And by the way, I didn't mention, but I obviously will put as much as I can, like the sketching stage and stuff, so you can maybe recreate the first step and then do this step with me. Okay, so just if you're interested in that kind of a thing. This line is terrible. Let me straighten it out. And here, how should I approach these lines? Right here, I think I'll just put a couple of dry brush marks. So let me try and get it right. Again, the limitations of filming means that I don't, I don't want to rotate, that's the thing. I don't want to rotate the painting. So I'll just go like this, and then like that. And hopefully that'll kind of fill in for that roll. Um, a few more from top to bottom. Get rid of some water on the towel. And do this kind of a thing. Okay, there we go. So that kind of closes off the left section. Not too much to do there. Uh, I will darken, let me show you, this entire thing. Let's get it darker. I mean, it has no real use to us as a highlight. And that's pretty much it for this wash. I think I'll let it dry and then come back and see what else I can do. But this pretty much is what I wanted to show you, the main bulk of approaching these large washes. Use a lot of water, keep it wet, keep it moving. It really is important. So it's all dry now. And the question I asked myself is why not? Why not show you uh, how I take this to completion? Um, at the very least, some of the main shadows. And I will do these a little cooler here. You see, they're a little bit cooler. But look at what I'm doing here. It's still gonna be a fairly wet wash. Again, I'm using the same colors, French Wolf Marine. You have to look at what I'm taking from the, the pens and the consistency always changes. I can't give you a formula, but basically French Wolf Marine and we'll mute it with a bit of red and a bit of yellow. You see how dominant the yellow is? So a bit more blue. And that's looking more like what I need, okay? So let's, I'm just gonna go over this section right here um maybe i'll start from this side okay and the reason i'm mixing it light is yes i want to have an easier time with the flow but also it shouldn't be much darker it's actually quite a mild difference whoops <laughs> that happens um it should be a very gentle difference between the two so there is a, a line of shadow that cuts through here goes around this roof this triangular roof, so that's gonna be a nice way of showing it without using any, you know, opaque paint or highlights for this. You don't have to use them for everything. And then there's a beautiful shadow underneath it that I want to get as well, okay? So I'm gonna get it like this. And look at the shapes here. It doesn't matter if you get it accurately, like a lot of people are worried about. Just get something interesting in with the general direction diagonally and to the left, okay? Now this looks quite dark in the camera, but uh, trust me, it's actually okay. Now if you wanna lighten it up, let's let's do this. 
put some water in it, uh, but I, I do think it's gonna be okay. Uh, so here we go. The shingles cast a beautiful, beautiful shadow. And that's a part of what you're seeing there. Uh, so, and then there's all the details here. There's this window with a lot of kind of a carving or I don't know what it is, but it's just real lovely. And this casts a few shadows. And now I can stop with this section for a few moments. Sorry, touch the wash. And go up a bit, use a bit of pure red, just to make sure that I preserve some of those beautiful red shingles, okay? And you don't have to do this for everything, just maybe the area that's a little more facing towards the light, and then continue the wash to the left, which is really important. So let's get to it. Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much now with the waiting time. You see, even when you're on top of everything, yes, you will sometimes lose some of the wetness of the wash. That's perfectly okay. Um, you just have to know how to make up for it or just how to gracefully fall, as they say. Now, this window, I do think it'll be better to go darker, even though initially I, I was like, oh, it looks nice like this, wet and wet. No, let's, let's take it one step further. So what we actually have here, let me show you, is and I'm gonna use pure colors here. I'm gonna hopefully blow our minds. So, see, that's a bit of a, you know what? No, that, that doesn't work. Let's make it darker. Let's just make it a warm mix. I thought something else would happen, but I don't like it. Let's actually do this. Okay, so this is kind of a warm, slightly lighter for the top. And then I'm switching over to a darker blue, okay? Like this. And, you know, it's a small space, so do everything in one wash as much as you can, you know? Um, actually, I like, hmm, I like that strong contrast, but you know what, let's, let's still go with it the way I see it. There is a strong shadow here, and a strong kind of shadow to the right side, and stronger kind of shadows here, and here for the details of the windows. And sorry, I'm really sloppy with my brushwork today, so my apologies. And then it goes lighter, so let's use this very light, um, cerulean blue and fill in the gaps you know I love to sometimes put the darks and then fill in the gaps with a very uh, with a very wet paint and so the black uh, or the dark kind of blends together with the lighter wash and that looks really really cool okay and this moves down here all the way to this crack in the wall that's a very nice detail that I do want to get in. So make it a little warmer, a little more red. Because that part is really more in the light. Get rid of some water and brush. Go around it like this. Like that. Kind of indicating the cracking of the different uh, I don't know, tiles or stones used to build the wall. Um, there is, I don't know why I did two of these, but I'll, I'll just keep it like this. I, I added an extra one because maybe I wanted to move it downwards a bit. Uh, and then let's switch to our trusty uh, rigger brush here just to get some of the bricks of this wall and skip the what's supposed to be highlights. And again, don't paint each and every brick. Have mercy on the viewer and let them kind of interpret it. See, some are more close together, others are farther, and just, you know, let them do something, let the viewer be a part and a participant in the painting, okay? By leaving something to their imagination. So something like this, I think that looks good, gives it kind of a texture of the bricks. Now there are a few shadows by bricks that stick out, so let's do that. Uh, it could be a nice little thing to hint at, so we have one here. It casts this beautiful diagonal shadow, and because it has an irregular shape, the shadow is irregular too. Something to have in mind. Think in terms of shapes and not in terms of what you're actually painting. Something I always tell people, and it seems like a lot of people have a hard time with. I'm gonna put a bit of a darker wash for the shingles in the shadow on the left, which I kind of missed earlier, and I think it'll look really nice. Something like this. Um, and then we have that detail here that I can put in with a bit of a dry brush. So something like that and here as well. And I think it kind of works. I don't know if I want to add anything. I kind of like that this section is 
a little lighter. I, I really honestly am hesitant to darken it. I'm looking at the monitor of the camera. It doesn't look like it needs much. Let's do this. Let's just add a couple of dry brush marks to this part of the wall. I can even add the arch, but I, I'd rather keep this part fairly abstract. So a line like this, a few lines maybe hinting at the direction of the wall, which I messed up, so it should be this way probably, like this. And that'll kind of give it a feeling of solidness without going into too many details there. If it sticks out too much again, just go like this, let it spread out a bit. Um, let's let it rest for a few moments. I think it's done, I'll, I'll consider it and we'll see. So I think this one is done in terms of the, the main stuff. Now it's just correction time. So for corrections, I think for example, this here should be a little darker right down the middle. See that as a darker shape. The wall to uh, the right shouldn't actually be as light as the sky. So let me do this and get rid of the highlight here. We don't need that. It's not a highlight, actually. And to be honest, do I want to add a few more bricks or something like that? I'm not sure. I actually like it the way it is. Let's see here. Let's add a few kind of thinner details. I do have an idea in mind. We'll see if I do it in just a moment. This here is a little, uh, again, indented. So you kind of see the shape here. Um, these kinds of details, yes, you can put in. I wouldn't put every single detail I see, uh, but this kind of a thing, yes, that's perfectly fine. This I won't darken, even though it needs darkening. I want to pull the viewer's attention to this spot here, or the, the center. Um, let's get a few kind of darker details within the window, but keeping it fairly... Huh fairly loose. I don't want to spell out anything too much. So kind of like this. And it has some circles in it. So you're kind of hinted at what's there. And then again, you can use the sprayer as a magic trick to help these just be a little less obvious. Or you can always use your finger to smear them uh, to get rid of some of the details. Um, so the thing I thought I'd do, let's see how it goes. Some bricks are darker than the others, but it's a very small difference. So let me try and just darken one and see how it looks. So for example, a good candidate is uh, this brick right over here. Because I do see it looks a little darker. Does it look off? Does it look okay? I don't know, but we'll see. Once it dries, it, it's, it looks dark because it's wet now. Um, and then maybe let's choose another one. Let's make this one even lighter. So maybe this, which one should I go with? Maybe this one here, kind of imagining it, imagining there's a brick right there. And maybe let's do another one here, just to give it some kind of a texture in addition or interest to the wall. You see it kind of gives it a bit of character, uh, if you will. Same goes, for example, this one. I know I don't want to pull too much attention to this area, but. I think it'll look nice to just get one of them darker, you see? It just gives it a bit of character. In fact, let's get another one darker, but kind of uh, warmer, maybe more red. Um, which one uh, should we go with? Maybe, maybe this one right here to tie it into the shingles. So you see something like that. And with that, I think we're done. Uh, let me sign this one real quick, remove the tape for you, and we'll see the end result. And I, you can always add, the fact you remove the tape doesn't mean you can't uh, keep doing improvements, and I may very well uh, do that. Let's see if I fit in the long last thing. <laughs> Um, I may very well do some improvements later on, we'll see about that, but for now I really, really like it. Let me just dry it a bit. So this one's pretty much dry, I'm very pleased with it, I think the temperature is interesting. If I even show it to you up close, you see these nice transitions there, I really, really like it. Hopefully the colors are coming through well as well. Um, there's a lot of red in here, I'll also of course show you a picture of the end result. Uh, but let us remove uh, the tape and see what we got. Always interesting seeing that. Hopefully we didn't have too much 
uh, leaking because after the first wash the tape came out and then I had to retape it of course uh, so here we go had a good time with this and I know this wash is the kind that really uh, challenges and sometimes even frustrates people so if that's you go high key go lighter mix more water in it really does work it really does make life a whole lot easier and you can get that uh, variation and value that you need and it still will look great i love this crack and i love this area as well really turned out nicely uh, and yeah this is it thank you so much for watching let's wrap it up so i really hope you enjoyed this bit of a more spontaneous video of course i was just like i feel like sharing the actual process here uh and and so just to show you and it's one of my favorite stages actually where you put the shadows in and you really turn it from just an underpainting to something that has volume, has three-dimensionality, has a feeling of solidity to it or solidness. I don't know whichever is the right word, but in any case, yeah, here it is. Final result, I do wanna thank you so much. And if you reach the end of the video, please, if you can drop a like, subscribe if you still aren't. I have tons of videos like this one. Stay tuned, because there's gonna be a lot more interesting stuff. I'm also working on a new course for you. We'll keep you updated on that. I really do appreciate you watching. Let me know in a comment also what you think of this one and what else you want to see. I'm looking for new ideas of things that people really want to show to me to show and people are really maybe also frustrated or struggle with. So thank you so much. I will see you again real soon. So thank you so much. I will see you again real soon.